Welcome back to my office. One advantage of this connection through the camera is the fact I'm keeping my office clean during your visits. Thank you for joining me today. Again, it's my goal that during this coronavirus storm that we stay connected because I believe it's going to be very important for you to continue to have your faith refreshed. I want to continue to feed you spiritually during these days. So hang in there, be encouraged, and continue to remember God's everlasting arms that wrap around you. Today we complete this Romans 12, 12 theme verse. Again, Paul told us to be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer. We talked about the first part, to be joyful in hope. That future hope of heaven and the present hope that we have as Christ walks with us, He is near, He is with us in this storm. He is a God of hope, and we will always have hope in Christ. The second part of that verse is to be patient in affliction. Remember, we talked about how we are to remain faithful during affliction, and we are to grow spiritually during times of affliction. God has purpose in this. Allow your roots to grow deeper in Him. But now today, let's look at that third part, faithful in prayer. For those of you that are members of First Baptist Church that come on a regular basis, you know that prayer is one of my favorite topics from the Word of God. We are reminded that the disciples asked Jesus, please teach us how to pray. And the reason for that request is because they saw something different in the prayer life of Jesus. They saw intimacy and they saw effectiveness. They were accustomed to their own prayer lives that were very much based on rituals or duty. There was nothing personal there, no power there, and they wanted something different. And I pray you have that same longing to have a prayer life that is powerful and personal. Charles Spurgeon said this, true prayer is neither a mere mental exercise nor a vocal performance. It is far deeper than that. It is spiritual transaction with the creator of heaven and earth. That should excite us. As we talk to the Lord, we are talking to the creator of everything, the all-powerful God, the Almighty. That's what makes prayer so exciting. E.M. Ballon said, Prayer should not be regarded as a duty which must be performed, but rather as a privilege to be enjoyed, a rare delight that is always revealing some new beauty. I trust you, like me, we are still growing in our prayer life. We're still learning how to be more effective in our prayer time. And so today I'm excited about this topic because prayer serves as the lifeline between us and the one upon the throne in heaven. Prayer is the means in which we bring our request to Him. Prayer is the means in which we worship the Lord. So again, Romans 12, 12, Paul said these words, to be faithful in prayer. Now that's found in the context of hope and affliction. And no doubt it is typically easier for us to be people of prayer during times of affliction. There's a quote that I will never forget that says, need drives us to our knees. But we are to be people of prayer both in the valley and on the mountaintop. We are to be connected with the Lord no matter what we are experiencing in this life, no matter our circumstances. We must be people of prayer. Again, prayer is our life support that brings restoration, forgiveness, strength, and hope as we approach that throne of grace with confidence, knowing that it is through Jesus Christ that we have that right to enter God's presence. Prayer is essential for us as Christians. Perhaps this is why Martin Luther said these words, To be a Christian without prayer is no more possible than to be alive without breathing. So again, when Paul says to be faithful in prayer, that word faithful means to be devoted. In fact, if you go back to Acts chapter 2 and see that picture of the early church, and it says that they were devoted to the apostles' teaching. That word devoted is the very same Greek words that we have right here with the word faithful. We're to be faithful in prayer. We're to be devoted to God through prayer. We are to be strong in prayer, unwavering, and spending time with the Lord. Paul wrote in Philippians chapter 4 that it is through prayer that God gives us this peace that transcends all understanding 
and it guards our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. But we must bring our request to Him. And then Paul wrote in Ephesians chapter 6, that chapter on the spiritual armor, that we are to pray all kinds of prayers. So let's be very practical and relevant here. Right now, I'm sure we are accustomed to asking prayers, bringing our request to God. God, please take care of this. God, please take care of that. God, please protect my family. God, please protect the medical personnel and give the scientists wisdom right now to help find a cure to this norm. Those are proper prayers. The Bible tells us to bring our request to Him. So pray for your families, pray for your churches, pray for our leaders in our nation as they lead during this unprecedented time. But let me encourage you, as you think about your asking prayers, think about your responding prayers. A prayer of worship, prayers of praise, prayers of thanksgiving, and prayers of confession. I am convinced that more times than not, we spend most of our time asking of God instead of responding to who He is. But even within our responding prayers, let me encourage you to do something. To prioritize your prayers for those that are lost compared to those prayers that you ask for yourself or for physical matters. Recently, I was reading the book of J.D. Greer called Above All. And in that book, I found this quote about prayer that was very challenging to me, and I hope it challenges you. He wrote, If God answered in one fell swoop all of the prayer members in your church prayed last week, how many new people would be in the kingdom? So be a person of prayer. Be faithful in prayer. Be strong in prayer. Bring your request to God, but also respond to God through praise and worship. But when you pray... Don't forget the many lost people that are in the world today going through this storm, asking why, what is going on. Pray that they would find Christ in the midst of the storm. And pray that God would use you to be light and salt in this time of darkness and decay spiritually so that God can use you to join Him to point others to Christ. Again, church family and friends, be encouraged. Be faithful. Remember the hope that you have in Christ. Persevere, be patient, and be faithful in prayer. So in closing, we close again with the words of Elizabeth Elliot. Remember, you are loved with an everlasting love, and underneath are the everlasting arms. <laughs>